Okay, we're going to show how to set up the DynaVibe, how to get it installed on the aircraft, uh, how to take measurements. Uh, the first thing we start with is the accelerometer. So we'll take out the accelerometer and we're going to mount it on the engine using our bracket kit. Uh, out of the bracket kit there's a small right angle bracket. So we're going to use a standard right angle bracket out of the bracket kit. Uh, we're also going to use case bolt adapters which just make it a lot more efficient. So we do have these as an option. Uh, the case bolt adapters make it really quick. Uh, otherwise, without the case bolt adapters, we'd probably have to pull the cowling off and uh, access some of the bolts at the front of the engine. Uh, so let me show you how to use the case bolt adapter kit first. Uh, what we're going to do is attach the accelerometer using the screw head. We're going to put that on the accelerometer and that's a standard uh, 1032 AN3 uh, bolt. You don't have to use the socket head if you want to use a pan head or uh, some other AN3 that would be fine too. So we're going to get that snugged up and then we're going to use one of the case bolt adapters uh, that allows us to access the threads at the very front of the engine and we'll come over here and show where this case bolt adapter is going to fit on the engine. So this is the case bolt adapter. You'll notice that it's got a fairly large thread on one side and a, a quarter 28 on the other. And what we can do is just install that directly on the remaining threads from the case through bolt. So that gives us a position very close to the propeller, as far forward as we can get it, uh, snugly onto the front of the engine. All right, so now we're going to show how to install the accelerometer. The accelerometer comes one piece, cable and everything's uh, attached and ready to go. We're going to lay that cable up on the top. We want the accelerometer positioned as close to the front of the engine as we can get it. We're going to come in, put the bracket onto the adapter, and start the nylock nut. And then route the cable so that it's going to be clear of the propeller, and we'll get that tightened up. cabling so that it stays clear of the propeller and that it doesn't pull on the accelerometer. So we want to put just a little bit of slack in here and then go ahead and tape that. And then we're going to tape it down the side of the cowling. This is going to keep it from moving around on the cowling as the slipstream comes back along the outside. Now we're going to set up our photo tack bracket. Uh, we're going to use a right angle bracket. Uh, both of these brackets are for the photo tack, but for this we're going to use the right angle bracket. And we're going to take the small nut off the front that goes through the hole in the right angle bracket. And then we're going to put just a little bit of tape on the bottom of the bracket because this is metal, we don't want it to scratch up the cowling. We'll put a little tape on the bottom and then we'll mount that on the cowl and we'll show that here in just a second. Okay, so we've put a little bit of tape on the bottom of this plate. We don't want to scratch the cowling up. And then we're going to go ahead and get that positioned on the aircraft. Uh, it's nice to just put it right on the outside of the cowling. We're going to tape it down real well. But that allows us to uh, eliminate a lot of steps. Pulling the cowling off saves a lot of time. So we're just going to have this uh, taped down right up here at the top. Uh, we'll get our tape. And we've cleaned this with just a little bit of av fuel in order to uh, get the tape to stick well. We'll 
want to make sure to use nice long strips so that uh, it's held down well. And then one of the things I like to do is put uh, a little piece of tape at the front. We don't want the photo tack lifting up, so we'll put a small piece right across the front to keep that bracket from lifting. And then the next step will be we'll go ahead and route our cable. And again, we want to route the cable across the cowling and down the side with some tape. Okay, so we've got our photo tack set up here at the front, and now we want to secure all the cabling. We're going to route the photo tack across the cowling and secure it every foot or so. We've got our case bolt adapter set up with the bracket and the accelerometer right here at the front of the engine, as close as we can get it. We've got our photo tack set up, taped, secured. We take the wires on, literally just took a couple of minutes, and we're set up and ready to record data and uh, check this propeller. So we've got the GX, we've got our photo tack and accelerometer hooked up. Uh, the two connectors, the accelerometer, we're going to plug into the port uh, on the left side. And then this is the photo tack. That's the larger connector. We're going to plug it into the larger connector on my right side. Uh, so we've got the unit here. We're going to turn it on. And what's nice is once the unit is turned on, you're going to see that the photo tack lights up. There's going to be a red light shining out. There's also a red light on the very back. So we're going to be able to see uh, when we're lined up. But one of the features of the DynaVibe is there's also a tack align feature. So without looking at the back of the photo tack, we can take our reflective tape and just by looking at the aligned notice, we can determine where that tape should be. So we're going to put our tape on and get this ready to run. We're going to position it so that that uh, photo tack is lined up with it. Uh, just to show you here on the outside, I like to put it vertically. Um, that way, if there's any uh, alignment changes or as the prop shifts pitch, it's not going to lose signal. Uh, we remove a little piece of reflective, a uh, little piece of adhesive on the back and mount that on the back of the blade. We're going to show how to set up the uh, DynaVibe GX so that we can take data. Uh, when I do this, I like to stand in front of the airplane so that it, it gives us a good uh, concept of exactly what the alignments are. I'm going to turn the unit on. It's going to pop up, uh, show us when our calibration is due. Uh, these use soft keys, so I'm going to hit F4, and then we're going to use auto balance mode for the aircraft today. So I'll hit F3 for auto balance mode. And there is a next button. So it says remove all trim weights. I've already done that. I've taken off the previous trim weights. Uh, we're going to start fresh. So I've removed all the trim weights. I hit next. It's now asking for owner, aircraft, general information. Uh, what's important on this screen, while it's good to have all the data, the important portion is the horsepower. The DynaVibe needs to know how much horsepower the engine uh, generates because that's an estimate of how much the aircraft uh, engine weighs. So by putting in the correct horsepower, it's an estimate of how much the engine and propeller combination weigh. So we're going to put that in. And for the next step, it's asking us how many blades are on the propeller. Uh, we use our keypad to adjust that. And I'm going to tell the computer it's got three blades. And I can see it just by holding it up there against the, uh, the aircraft spinner. Next question it's asked is what's the direction of rotation? So the computer does a lot, of, uh, a lot of mathematics in order to correct for the direction of rotation. So 
So we want to just look at it and make sure that the direction of rotation is the same as shown on the screen. Uh, once we've got that set, we hit next. Now the computer is asking, where is the photo tag? So sometimes uh, you may need to mount the photo tag in a different position, but we're going to have the photo tag mounted directly on the center line. So we, we graphically adjust the position of the photo tag so that it's exactly as we see it on the, uh, on the engine. So I've got the photo tag mounted at 12 o'clock. It's mounted at 12 o'clock. It matches the screen. And then we move to the next step. The next step is the accelerometer. It wants to know where did we mount the accelerometer. In most cases, the accelerometer is going to be mounted vertically, so it looks like 12 o'clock. It's straight up. Uh, there are other instances where we'd want to mount it at an angle, and this allows us to compensate for that. Uh, with the accelerometer mounted where it's at, we're going to leave this at 12 o'clock vertically, and we'll hit next. Now the computer wants to know how many weight locations. So for this engine, we have three blades, so we could have three, six, nine uh, weight locations, and it's essentially the positions that we're going to add weight. I'm going to tell the computer that we have six, two for each gap between the propellers, so there are six weight locations. And adjust that on the screen, go to six. And now it wants to know where is number one. We have our tape on the back of this propeller with the photo tack. This is lined up. It wants to know what is the position of the number one bolt. I'm going to use this bolt as number one. And what we want to do is match the orientation of the number one bolt to what we see on the screen. Once that's in the correct position, we're ready to start the run up. We're going to pull it outside, run the engine up. We've completed our first Dynavibe run and it's requesting 31 grams on bolt two. So one of the things to remember is this always references the tape in line with the photo tack. So we want to rotate the engine until those are lined up. Now you notice the mags are off, keys are on the dash. Uh, we're going to wind up rotating the propeller until our taped blade, this has tape on it right here in the back, is lined up with the photo tack. And we know that we had that mark for uh, screw number one. So this is number one position right here at the top. So what it's asking for is number two to have 31 grams. So we're going to go ahead and measure out 31 grams for the weight addition. Well, we've got the included scale here. We want to essentially add washers until we get as close to 31 grams as we can. So that's 30.9. It's a fairly large stack of washers. A lot of people don't realize that the propellers are pretty heavy. Uh, and they take a lot of weight in order to adjust them. So it looks like a lot of weight, 31 grams. We're going to go ahead and uh, use that. Now one of the things that's important with the Dynavibe is to tell it what you did. So it asked for 31 grams, but I've got 30.9. So I'm going to tell the computer that on bolt 2, I'm adding 30.9 grams. So even though its suggestion was for a different weight, I'm telling the computer what I'm doing, and that will allow the computer to learn for the next run. So I'm going to install 30.9 grams on bolt 2, and we'll go from there.
So we've got our 30.9 grams installed on bolt two. Remember that this was bolt one. And the Dynapi will actually show you graphically that bolt two is in this position. So we've got the weight added. Uh, we're ready to go out and do our second run. So we've completed our second run. Uh, during the first run, the Dynavibe asked for 30.9 grams, 31 grams. Uh, we added that. This is our second run. Uh, the Dynavibe, between the two runs, has learned for this engine, this spinner-propeller combination, uh, how much weight is going to need to correct that. Uh, it's asking for 50 grams on bolt three. Uh, that's quite a bit of weight. Uh, the procedure we're using today has a limit of 35 grams. So we're going to put 35 grams on bolt 3 and 15 grams on bolt 2. We're going to split the weight up a little bit. Uh, we go back to our scale. We're going to make a stack of 35 grams, uh, 35.3. So that's going to be our bolt 3 addition. And I'm going to tell the computer 35.3. Uh, even though it's asking for 50, I tell the computer that on bolt 3, we're going to add 35.3 grams. And then on bolt 2, we will add 17.6. That's going to be our other stack up. And we'll go ahead and add those weights and then we'll pull it out and run it again. got done with our second correction run. Uh, the Dynavibe asked for 50 grams. We added 50.1. We told the computer exactly what we uh, put on and where we put it on. Uh, we now are at uh, less than 0 0.10 ips. Uh, normally for most aircraft you want to be below 0 0.20. Uh, we, we like to, we prefer to be below 0 0.10 and we're at a 0 0.08. So three runs uh, including the initial run and we're finished. Uh, it's very quick to install the equipment and do the three runs, put the weight on. Uh, we've generated a report that is now on the Dynavibe that we can download off the SD card that is a complete report of the work we've done and any other vibrations in the engine are all recorded in that report. So uh, we're ready to finish up, pull the hardware off.